Hello, my name is Chelsea Young and I'm the Instruction and Engagement Librarian at the Ottenheimer Library. Um, this is the Experience Age, gamifying education to create an inclusive environment for student learning. Uh, this is brought to you by myself and by my colleague, Hannah Hurdle, um, and you will get to see her contact information at the beginning. She wasn't able to join me for this one, so, uh, but, uh, so I'm sad to say that, but she um, has helped me create uh, this wonderful thing. Um, so let's just get down to it. Um, so this is where we just kind of wanted to show you um, how we went about doing um, these type of gamified sessions. Um, these were to try to help create um, and uh, utilize UDL, the Universal Design for Learning, to help make it a lot um, more inclusive, a lot more accessible for students. Um, from from all areas. So uh, whenever we started with a class, when we started with one of our learning modules, uh, we had created a, an outline for the class. We talked about uh, the learning objectives that we wanted. Um, we included a class question to start some discussion with the class. Um, we also use Mentimeters uh, throughout uh, our presentation um, just to kind of give them a break from, you know, uh, just talking, uh, gets them on their phones for just a minute, um, and it gives us a little bit of assessment in class, um, and it can help uh, us as instructors kind of steer a little bit uh, how we do things. So if we they feel really comfortable or confident with something, it's easier for us to, to go over that. Um, if they struggle a little bit more, it also helps us to see what areas we might need to cover, maybe a little bit more in depth. Um, so the class question does really great in pairing with this defining of definitions. Um, we allow the students um, to define one of the keywords that we are going to be discussing. Um, that way they can we can kind of see where they are um, in what they know about that particular topic, that particular word. And then we will also go and show them kind of like the word, the definition that we have, uh, kind of like a more overarching one. Um, and this really helps for the students to, to kind of see and compare where their definition and the other definition match and meet up. And it can create some really good, interesting dialogue between the students and between the instructor. So we've used this. It's been really uh, successful, I found. We use examples where we'll show something up on the screen. We have the students do that in an activity. And we have broken up our instruction um, to include more activities um, and uh, more group work to try to make it um, more peer-led teaching um, and to make it a lot more inclusive so more of the students' voices can be heard in the actual class um, so that everybody creates a better understanding of things. And then at the end of the class, we always save time for discussion debriefing. Um, so there's always time for questions. Uh, there's times to help better explain things. And it can really get um, some dialogue going between students um, talking about, you know, what was easier for them to learn, how it will affect their other studies, you know, different things like that. So to kind of show you how we've done things like that, um, I wanted to show you. Uh, this is like one of the mentees that we do. Woo! See if I can move my picture. Um, so like we'll do things like, you know, what do you think of whenever you hear the word research? You know, how familiar are you with uh, keywords or things like that? Um, sometimes we have it, you know, yes, I feel very confident with this. Uh, uh, maybe I need a little bit more help or no, I have no idea at all. Or like with this one, I think this one is more like a word cloud. So we can kind of see where students are and that can help us um, gauge where students are, it can kind of help us lead us as we're going through the instruction session to uh, maybe cover something a little bit more. Um, maybe we don't have to discuss this one aspect of something as much as we thought we might have. Um, just depends on, you know, how students have answered these questions. Um, and it kind of gives us kind of like a before and an after um, of how students feel in a, in a class. And these have been uh, pretty fun. Um, some students uh, go all out, some hold back a little bit more. So it's really interesting to see the examples and stuff that students do. Of course, it doesn't want to work now. There. Um, so we also put in uh, the learning objectives um, where we show students um, 
what they want to do uh, or what we want the students to get out of the class. And this kind of shows uh, how we're going to, to do the class, how we're going to structure it, frame it. This is what we want the students to learn. And this is the steps that we kind of take to make sure that, that happens. Um, so we do like, you know, identify ways to foster engaging and interactive collaboration between students through gamification, um, prioritize building upon students prior knowledge to support inclusive learning. So that's, you know, where those mentees come in, um, seeing what they know previously and going forward, the class definition, seeing what they already know about the keyword and move forward. Um, and then demonstrate how to generate keywords to create research questions through a simulated library instruction class. So this is where we get into more like the activity portion where they have something um, to do to help them kind of practice. Um, and so like one of the examples that we do is this one. Uh, we throw up a, a word on the screen and we have the students come up with keywords um, about the library. So if you have to describe the library, how are you going to describe it? Uh, books, computers, uh, a building, you know, different things like that. Um, and we do uh, some different words with this just to kind of like get students talking, um, just kind of like get the class engaged and get it going. Um, so we'll do like library. We do have other ones and we can cater these to the class. So we do like library, Harry Potter, uh, you know, different things like that just to kind of uh, get the class started, get it going. And sometimes uh, these can get really energetic. It can be really fun. So uh, all the fun with these. Then we, uh, this is that class question. What are keywords? Uh, we uh, tell this to the class and then what we have them do is we have them create their own definition of it. Uh, some people it's just like a simple word. Sometimes it's just a phrase. Uh, sometimes it can be a whole sentence. So we, we let the students kind of create what their definition is. So what is the definition of a keyword? What do they call um, a keyword? And then what we do is then we show them uh, what ours is. Um, this one is definitely uh, more structured than what theirs is. Um, and a lot of the times what the students have said and what this one say tend to meet up, at least the idea of it all, that it all tends to meet up. You know, they hit a lot of the same words. Um, so this is where, you know, it helps validate what students already know. Um, and it can help give them a little bit more uh, to learn. Maybe it showcases something in a different light. So there's that learning, uh, the instructor learns what they already know, and then the students kind of learn uh, maybe more uh, general idea or more structured version of what this is. So it, it really kind of helps bring everybody onto the same page in a really fun and engaging way so everybody has their voice heard. And then we also go through things like uh, a mind map diagram. So students can kind of see how like one of the keywords that they have uh, have selected, how they can grow that into different search terms and how that one search term can link to something else, which can lead to something else. And that can help steer their research, how they can use um, that to uh, expand the keywords that they have. And they can see different connections to things and that can um, possibly take their, their paper, their project, their assignment into a whole new avenue. Um, it can change it, it can make it more specific, uh, you know, lots of different things like that. So this has been really helpful for students to be able to kind of like zone in on something or to broaden things out and expand um, their knowledge of things. So this has been something students have really liked and really enjoyed. So, uh, and again, in class, this is where we would kind of come back. We would uh, show the class, this is where we are now. This is how uh, we're going through this step process to ensure that you know what we're trying to get across. Um, we can do another mentee, like, you know, well, after we've done this group activity, you've created your own mind map. You know, we've talked about this. How do you feel about it now? Um, and again, this is kind of where like that in-class ass assessment can really help. So we get an idea how students are doing. Um, if there's anything we need to go back and touch on. Um, how we can uh, go going forward. So, you know, things like this have been really helpful. We've really enjoyed them. Um, and this is where we can launch into another activity to kind of like help reinforce what we've gone over and it can also touch on other things. So group activity part one, we can do something where we have dice, a dice game that we can utilize. 
Um, they'll get one that's a source like uh, an article, like a blog, and a video. Um, that's just a couple. This is a multi-sided dice. Um, and they'll roll this to see what type of source that they'll get. And then they have another dice. It's going to be like their search tool, like a specific uh, database like JSTOR, Google, Google Scholar, and YouTube. So what they'll do is they'll roll their source die um, to see what type of source they're going to get. They'll roll their search die, search tool die, to see what sort search tool they'll get. Um, and they'll have to see whether they can find that source in that search tool. So this helps them to kind of see the connection between sources and the tools that they can use. Um, so they can see what tools are available and how easy it is to find certain types of sources in those tools. Um, so they can make those connections and increase their own learning as they're going along. Um, this has been a really fun one uh, to do. Um, especially in person, because then each student gets their own dice, set of dice. Uh, we have done it online, uh, where we as the instructor will roll for them. Um, that one's not as much fun, because, um, you know, they don't get the dice themselves. Um, but it, but it's still been uh, kind of fun and intriguing for them, because it's, you know, just a different way to approach things. So we've done that. We have another uh, group activity um, that we can do. It can still, it still utilizes. Uh, the dice, you can still use the dice here, but you can also use um, these. And these will have like different subjects for them to do, um, different assignments for them to do, like case study, a PowerPoint, like how would they use uh, the information like for subject. This one is episode in state history. Uh, we do have ones like extinction of species, you know, different things like that, have them look, and then who is their audience? Who would they be presenting this type of information to? Would they present it to parents? Would they present it to substitute teachers? Different things like that. And of course, we get the color cards here um, to help them identify different aspects of things, like um, determine, uh, like with the, uh, the blue one, I can find it, this fun color. Um, determine if the topic requires current or historical information, so when, so they have to look at when an article was published, um, and how is that going to affect what their assignment is? Um, is it going to help for them to have current history or, or current topics, or is it going to help for them to have historical information? So, you know, different things like that um, to help them see the, uh, the relationship between all of these and how everything kind of connects. Um, and how it affects one thing to the next. Um, so this really helps them with like connecting lots of different parts of the research, see how everything is involved. And it's been uh, a pretty interesting story. Again, this has been more fun whenever it's in person, but it does function online um, in terms of, you just have to keep up with who gets what. Uh, so it has been fun. We've enjoyed it. And I think the students have as well. We've had good responses. And so then what's left is discussion debriefing. And this is, you know, after students have done the activity, then we launch into our discussion debriefing. These are some of the questions that we have um, to try to jumpstart um, conversations between students. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You know, so you always have that quiet class. Um, uh, and sometimes I'll, I'll just pick on somebody and pick a discussion question just to get the ball rolling. Um, and th these have sometimes led to um, some very interesting discussions. Uh, sometimes one of these questions will launch a student into another type of question or another observation that they had, how this could affect their own search or what experience they might have had with that in the past. So um, these have been really cool, really interesting, and it launches, you know, uh, or it opens up the platform or it opens up the floor for um, questions, anything that they need us to go over again uh, that they might not be too sure of or how it might relate to something else. So this, these have been really good and really interesting to do. So just as we do for classes, we open up the floor for questions. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Hannah and I. We can uh, answer any of them for you. 
this is our contact information. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for uh, attending our session. Bye.